Catholics of goodwill, Catholics who love your faith, Catholics who love the church and want to see the church flourish, this video is for you because there have been a lot of confusion out there in the world today regarding Pope Francis, same-sex blessings, and a lot of things that just aren't true all the way down the line from Mormons to Jehovah's Witnesses to Protestants to atheists, all saying that the Catholic Church endorses gay marriage now, which is not true, all saying that the Catholic Church has changed her stance on homosexuality, which is not true, all saying that the Catholic Church has changed her teachings and going against the Bible now. The Bible clearly speaks against homosexuality, but now the Pope has said it's okay, and you can just bless marriages and unions, and all of that is just false, and I'm going to give you actual proof in this video of this. And I think a lot of the problems are because of people like this. Pope Francis blesses mortal sin, releases a document, a declaratio blessing mortal sin. What you heard everywhere. This is an out and out lie. It's slander, it's wrong. But I wanna reiterate that the Catholic Church has not changed anything. She's upheld the perennial teaching. And we're gonna, again, we're gonna prove that, actual proof in this document. And we're not just explaining things away, but we actually want to dive deep in and show you actual evidence. Because there's a lot of people on both sides, even some priests that I respect and that I love, even Cardinal Sarah and some others are confused right now. And I think there's a few different reasons reasons for it. Number one, people are just going to paragraph 31 and saying, see, the couples are blessed. You can bless same-sex couples now. It's okay. Despite what everything else said. Now, there are many honest people who want to believe that the Pope and the Church are on the right track, but they have a hard time understanding the document, or they didn't understand, or it seems to imply something. And I think there's three big reasons for this that so many people are confused. One, because right after it came out, we have the hysteria of worldwide media saying the Catholic Church has changed her teachings. Now, what does that do to every person? What did that do to good Catholics? What did that do to me when I read the headlines? What did that do to most people? <gasps> what the heck is going on? Oh my gosh, crisis, damage control. All of a sudden, we're listening to the media. But of course, I've learned these lessons a long time ago, so I immediately go to the sources and see that it's not so, what the media says and what they want to be true and what is actually true are oftentimes two different things. But like tentacles coming off of a species or branches coming off of a tree, they influenced so many people. They put it in their minds already that the Catholic Church has changed her teaching. The Catholic Church has been undermined. The Catholic Church finally, in big news, has changed everything. So we are already reading the documents with this suspicion in many times. It's called the hermeneutic of suspicion or rupture. You're not reading it through the eyes of the church in the way they want us to understand it, but we're trying to figure it out ourselves. And this leads us to problem number two, I think, that has led to this huge confusion dishonest people, but also honest people have read the documents and they all get hung up on one paragraph, maybe two, paragraph 31, which talks about the blessing of same-sex couples. And many honest people come away thinking, well, couples can be blessed. I mean, that's what they've been saying. That's what the media says. That's what some Catholic sensationalists and gaslighters who are just like the media have been saying. And it's so many that, well, I'm seeing it for myself. It says couples, therefore it is. And they're not understanding the whole document or the context of it, which is absolutely imperative. Honestly, a lot of what we're doing is sola scriptura for Protestants. I'm reading the document the way I understand it. I'm putting my own interpretation on it. I This is the way I read it. And it says couples, that's what it is. And we're not reading it from the mind of the church in the way they want us to understand it. And this is going to be so obvious in this video when we bring out the text and the other text and the clarifications and everything the Pope has said recently. It just clarifies and justifies everything we've been saying here at Catholic Truth, despite people saying we're Pope Splainers. This actually is going to prove everything that we've said correct. The third reason there's so much confusion is because of context. Context, context. People aren't reading the context. They're reading paragraph 31 out of context. Not only out of context of the document, but out of everything else as well. It's similar to what people do with Vatican II, rad trads, and Sede Vacantis, and SSPX say, oh, the Catholic Church, it says in Vatican II, allows everyone to go to heaven now. Pretty much all religions are the same. But either they haven't read the documents, or they're not being honest about them, or they're approaching them with a hermeneutic of rupture or uh, suspicion, meaning you're reading it 
already thinking that it's wrong, already thinking that it's a problem and you're just going to find the problem and anything that seems like a problem becomes the problem rather than trying to understand it with the hermeneutics of continuity and understanding it the way it was meant to be. And in fact, ignoring the rest of the context, which Vatican II talks about, there's only one true religion, the Catholic Church. There's only one true bank banquet, Eucharistic sacrifice of the Mass, and so on and so on. So it contradicts what they say, but they ignore the context. People do this with the Bible too, all the time. We don't understand that. We not only have to read a Bible verse, but you have to read the verses around it, but not only the verses around it, you have to read the whole chapter to get the understanding of what that one verse is saying. This is the proximate context and the remote context. This is the proper way of reading scripture. It's proper hermeneutics, okay? And you not only read the chapter, but you have to read the whole book because the whole theme of the book summarizes it. But you also have to understand the New Testament and the Bible itself. So you can't just take one verse. You have to take it all together to understand properly how to interpret scripture. And it's the same thing with magisterial documents. If you're not going to bother reading Vatican II and just taking a few verses out of context and saying, see, then you're being dis honest. And you're, you're no better than Protestants who say that Catholics worship Mary, Catholics worship the Pope, Catholics treat Mary as a goddess. They don't care what the documents say. They don't care what our teaching says. They read one little thing that seems suspicious, and it becomes fact. And that is a huge problem. And as Catholics, we need to do better. We need to do better. That is of Satan. On this point, words have meanings. And we can't just ignore the meanings or what the church means by these words. So we can't just read paragraph 31 and ignore paragraph 11, ignore paragraph 5, ignore the rest of the document, ignore the responsum from 2021, ignore the clarifications from Cardinal Fernandez and Pope Francis, and ignore everything else because we just want the Pope to be wrong. That's evil. That's pope explaining in reverse. You just assume it's wrong, and so you're going to find every explanation for why it's wrong, even though you don't care about the facts. We need to do better. And again, we're about to give proof in one second. But let me just say first that this current document, Fiducia Supplicans, it relies on, it builds off of, and it's an extension of the 2021 responsum from Pope Francis in regard to the same subject and in regard to blessings. So that was a very clear document. And I'm going to read some very clear statements from it here. And those are the necessary contextual foundations for understanding this document. If you don't know that document, you're not going to understand this document. And if you don't understand the other things the Pope has said and understand his mindset on all of this, if you think he supports homosexuality, if you think he's a modern liberal, if you think he's changing the, the teachings of the church, but you haven't, haven't read his writings on homosexuality and how he's called it a sin and unnatural and many other things, then you're going to read it in that context rather than in the appropriate context of his own truth. And to prove this, several times throughout the document, Fiducia Supplicans quotes the responsum from 2021. Some people say that that was a good document, but this document changed that. No, it didn't because it's literally quoting it and it's constantly going back to it, showing that it's in continuity with it. Listen to what it says in Fiducia Supplicans. It says, such is also the meaning of the responsum of the congregation of the doctrine of the faith, which states that the church does not have the power to impart blessings on same-sex unions. Now, let me ask you a question. How many news sources, how many Catholic sensationalist gaslighting influencers have said that the Catholic Church now blesses unions? Everybody can bless gay unions, homosexual unions. The Catholic Church blesses unions. All over the news, it said, we bless unions. All over Catholic sensational rad trad media, it says the Pope is okay with blessing unions now. Guess what? It actually says that the church does not have the power to bless unions of what? Same-sex couples. So that is a huge thing right there. A necessary, and this is at the beginning of the document, which is the foundation for the rest of the document. Necessary to understand. And it says the church does not have the power to impart blessings on unions. In other words, we can't bless unions. How many Thousands of people are saying we can bless unions now when it says we can't impart blessings on unions. 
I wish I could scream it, but I don't think it would make a difference. And the unions of what? Same-sex couples, so they can't be blessed. We've been saying this from the beginning. But as we go on and read both of these documents, in parts, I'm going to be giving you specific quotes. It's going to become even more obvious. But let's back up and look at the response from 2021. I want to bring out a couple interesting magnifying parts that need to be known. People either don't know, have ignored, or are reading it from a dishonest point, as <laughs> Pope Francis himself said. Many people wonder why this document was even necessary, and they go into it. First, to shoot down the German bishops who want same-sex weddings and same-sex marriages and want to be able to bless all of that sin, it's saying, no, you can't bless sin. Second, it says, listen to this, so that those who manifest a homosexual orientation can receive the assistance they need to understand and fully carry out God's will in their lives. Wow! How many thousands of Catholics <sighs> and news media sources have said that the intention of this document was to bless sin? How many... Re the one I played at the beginning of this video, the Catholic Church is now endorsing mortal sin, except that it literally says the opposite many times. So this person's being extremely dishonest and is just one example of many new sources, other religions who just don't understand. It says that it's to help them, to assist them to understand God's will and to fully carry out God's will in their lives. What is God's will? For us to give up our sin. To not live according to our sin, but to live according to virtue and the teachings of the church and the commandments of God. And this is brought out and said over and over and over again. Even Pope Francis said, and Cardinal Fernandez said that this has been said ad nauseum, meaning eternally, forever in these documents, where we can't bless sin and we're calling people out of their sin. And yet, what do Catholics say? That the church is blessing sin now. What does the secular media say? That the church is blessing sin now. It's okay. But what does the document itself say? It's not okay. The opposite. This is why I want to bring out what the actual text says. Because I, we need to clear up this confusion. There's just so much demonic spewing from the gates of hell who are spewing this division in the church. And it's right from hell. That's why I want to counter that with actual truth, what the documents say. And I know that any Catholics and every Catholic out there with ears to hear will hear this and understand it. If you need more proof, listen to what this next bomb of a text says. This is insanely clear and concise and beautiful. It says, it is necessary that what is blessed be objectively and positively ordered to receive and express grace. How? According to the designs of God inscribed in creation and fully revealed in Christ the Lord. Therefore, only those realities which are in themselves ordered to serve those ends are congruent with the essence of the blessing imparted by the church. I could just stop here. Finish. And I have proven my point. But there's so much more. I could stop here. And I would sufficiently have proven this. Because why? Everything that people are saying, that you can bless sin, that we're blessing couples, that we're blessing unions, we're blessing relationships, we're blessing mortal sin. Timothy Gordon. It's nonsense. It's evil. It says what is in what is necessary in order to be blessed must be positively ordered to receive and express grace. Meaning, not negatively, not sinfully. It must be positively. We must not be trying to live sin or trying to justify sin. And we must be trying to live according to the designs of God. And only those realities which are themselves ordered to serve those ends. Which ends? Living according to the design of God. What is the design of God? Overcoming sin and living holy. That is what God wants. And only people who are striving to do that are congruent with the essence of the blessings imparted by the church. Only those people who are striving to live according to the church and according to God can receive blessings. Did you hear that? So those who are trying to justify their sins, justify a relationship, justify something that's against God and his designs, can't be blessed. And I'm trying to 
be firm about this because it's so obvious and it's wrong because the documents are very clear. But it goes on. Let's listen to what else it says. For this reason, it is not licit to impart a blessing on relationships or partnerships, even stable, that involve sexual activity outside of marriage, as is in the case of unions between persons of the same sex. That's it. What else is there to say? What else is there to say? <laughs> How much more obvious has the church been? How much more obvious could the church be? It is not licit. I feel like everybody's hearing and saying that it is licit. They're hearing it. What the church is saying and what they're hearing through skewed means of receptivity is literally the opposite of what the church is saying. It said, it's not licit. It's not licit. It's not licit to impart blessings on relationships or partnerships, even stable ones, meaning people who truly love each other, that involve sexual activity outside of marriage, meaning you can't bless sin. That is what I've been saying for so long, that people accused me of Pope explaining, you know, and as in the, and it goes on to make it more clear, as is in the case of unions between persons of the same sex. We can't bless unions. We can't bless couples. We can't bless relationships. We can't bless these things. And as you're, we're talking about individuals here. So not couples as in a relationship. So when the church says we can bless couples, it's not talking about the relationship. It's not talking about the union. It's not talking about partnerships. It you literally uses these words and says that they can't be blessed. And over and over and over and ad nauseum, according to Fernandez, the church has said it can't bless sin. It can't bless unions, partnerships, or relationships. Done. This video is a lot longer, I apologize, but done. That we could end here. It's so clear. But there's more. I mean, this is so good. It's like so, this should be food for you Catholics out there who have been worried about this, who have been um, harassed about this, condemned about this, told you you're stupid, you're Pope explainer. The Pope's not even Catholic anymore. These people aren't Catholic anymore. That is a schismatic act that separates you from the Holy Pontiff. Now, let me ask you, what is the difference between a Catholic, a Protestant, and an Orthodox? Catholics accept the papacy and are in union with the Pope. Protestants and Orthodox do not. When you reject the Pope and you separate yourself from unity with him, what do you become? Someone who's outside the church. And that's the exact definition the church uses for schism. And that is a mortal sin on the way to hell. Be very careful, careful Catholics. Please, there's one thing in this church that we need to recognize, and that is demonic pride, where we think we can decide. We think we can condemn. We think we can tell the Pope of this and that. And we get so angry, which is really, this is what we need to realize. It's really fear-based, worry-based, that our church might be in error. It might be wrong after all. The Pope's destroying our church. We don't want any of that. So many of us have good intentions. We want to protect our church, but we're doing it the wrong way, and we have no faith. For Christ, who said that the gates of hell will not prevail, we have no faith that Jesus said he would guide his church into all truth, John 16, and that he would be with his church until the end of time, Matthew 28, 19 through 20. Have faith. If you don't have it, pray for it. Humble yourself. Get back into a deep prayer life because a lot of these things are not from God. Let's continue. And this is going to, this is crazy. This is saying that it, we can't even bless them even if there's, they're really good relationships. Listen to what it says. The presence in such relationships of positive elements, which are in themselves to be valued and appreciated, cannot justify these relationships and render them legitimate objects of an ecclesiastical blessing. Since the positive elements exist within the context of a union not ordered to the Creator's plan. This is exactly what I just said. That we nobody can receive a blessing to bless sin. You can't receive a blessing if you are not willing 
to live according to God's plan, according to his design, according to his commandments. So even if there's positive elements, even if two people truly do love each other and there is some good to the relationship, the Pope and the, uh, and the document are saying that you still can't bless the relationship no matter how much good is in it because it's intrinsically disordered. It's intrinsically against God and we can't bless sin. How unconfusing is that? <laughs> Seriously. That's why I think, uh, that's why I'm trying to point out that we can't just take one, con one line or one paragraph out of context that we have to take the the, the remote context as well. The context which led up to this document, which this document relied on. The document that we're, the response room that we're talking about now, that was the precursor for the one that we're talking about, Fiducia Supplicans. It relied on it. It's an extension of it. So this is the context of it. Anyone who reads it outside of that context is reading it wrong, which is exactly what the Pope said. Most people are reading it wrong and they're not understanding the mind of the church. Even the Pope called people out on that. Cardinal Fernandez called people out for that. So I think it's pretty obvious. It says within the context of union, 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 not ordered to God's plan. You can't bless unions. How many people, Catholics, influencers, are misleading people down the wrong road because they're misunderstanding the documents or not reading the context or reading it from suspicion and they just know Pope Francis is wrong and so they're going to figure out why and just pull these little things out. It gets even bigger. I mean, it just keeps boom, boom, boom. I mean, it's so obvious, but listen to what this says. This is, oh, this is just amazing. I mean, just, it's like a breath of fresh air. It's like oxygen in the, in the midst of absolute chaos and toxicity in our culture and even within our church. The divisions in our church are not from God, but listen to what this says. Furthermore, since the blessings of, per sorry, it says, it says persons. It says persons. I almost choked over that because everybody's saying we're blessing unions now. We're blessing gay marriage now. We're blessing relationships. We're blessing the couples. In other words, the relationship. No, no, no. It says we're blessing persons, which is what we've been saying for so long, which is what other people have been saying, which is what archbishops and priests have been coming out and saying. And everyone just says, oh, they're nuts. They're just trying to poke explain. Listen to what this says. It says, since the blessing of persons... I could just stop there. Are in relationship with the sacraments, the blessings of homosexual unions cannot be considered licit. It's literally making a distinction between persons and unions. Okay? Persons and unions. So in our last video where most people were on board, most Catholics were great. There were many Catholics who said that we were uh, really just off the base. We love your videos, but you are just stupid on this one. We were saying that Pope Francis, or uh, the document itself, says that you can bless persons, individuals, not unions, not relationships, not couples as in a relationship or union. We're talking about couples as in individuals, which we'll talk about in a second. And we were making the distinction between individuals and persons who can be blessed, and then the unions or relationships itself. And people were calling us stupid for that. And literally, it says it right here. It's making a distinction between persons and homosexual unions. And I pray, pray, pray that you all out there can see that. It goes on to say that this is because, and it explains it so clearly. It says this is because if we bless the homosexual unions, it would constitute a certain imitation or analog of the nuptial blessing invoked upon a man and a woman united in the sacrament of matrimony. So these blessings can't be compared to or even remotely, analogously compared to marriage in any way. Because the only licit relationship is one between a man and a woman that's open to children in marriage. That is what the documents say. That is what the perennial teaching of the church. That is what the document says it's upholding is the perennial teaching of the church. That is the correct mindset. All throughout Fiducia Supplicans, it's saying that the 
perennial teaching of the church is this, 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 this. So the mind of the church, the contact of the church, the mind of the person who's making this document is to uphold the perennial teachings of the church and not to change the teachings of the church on marriage or homosexuality or anything else in that regard. It's to uphold the teachings of the church. And we see this throughout this whole document. Clear! crystal clear. It's amazingly clear. It says that the declaration of the unlawfulness of blessings of unions between persons of the same sex is not, therefore, and is not intended to be, a form of unjust discrimination. So, in other words, just because we're saying that we can't bless unions or relationships or homosexuality or anything like that. It's not unjust discrimination. It goes on to say this, that the declaration of the unlawfulness of blessings of unions between persons, persons of the same sex. Notice it's not blessing the union. It's not blessing the couple as in the relationship. It's not blessing the sin. It's blessing persons of the same sex, okay? We can't bless the unions. We can bless the persons, but not the unions. It makes that pretty clear. I mean, some people have been saying, even Catholics said they agreed with the responsum in 2021. They thought that was wonderful and clear, really. Then you should accept this well, as well, since that was the foundation of this, and this is relying on that. It's quoting that, which continually goes back to that. And even Cardinal Fernandez, who gives speeches and has made clarifications, constantly goes back to the 2021 document. It's literally quoted all the time to show that that is the mind of the church, that nothing has changed. It's supposed to be read in that context, which is why we're spending so much time reading it to understand the context and to understand the mind of the church and understand what Fiducia Supplicans is saying in the right way. But you'll notice that a lot of the language in the 2021 responsum and fiducia supplicans has almost identical language. They're using so much of the same language because they're trying to make the same points and they're trying to bring out the same things. I mean, the German bishops want this and they want that and they want to bless sin. And the purpose of this document was to say no. And it was supposed to be this big no to the German bishops. But what did Catholics do? They said no to the Pope. We won't listen. We won't obey. We won't treat you seriously. We're not going to listen to anything this says. And it literally, what did the German bishops do? See, no one else is listening. We don't need, we don't need to either. But it's been so clear that the only people that can be blessed are those who are willing and trying to live out God's commands, who are not living in sin, who are not trying to justify sin, but who are trying to grow and follow God and be moral and live according to the church's teachings. That's what it has said, and that's what it's going to continue to say as we go on over and over and over and over and over again, ad nauseum. So, again, to clarify, the blessings are the persons who are seeking the blessings, individually who are seeking to correctly live according to God's will. Now, in the original 2021 document, they said that the people needed to come up individually to receive those blessings. Now they're saying they can come up together. Again, not as a relationship, not as a union, not as something we're trying to justify or bless, but they can come up together as two people instead of singularly. Why? Because Cardinal Fernandez said nothing in the church teaching has changed or can change. The sin can't be blessed, and we've made that clear. So even if they want to come up together to receive individual blessings, that's okay because we're only blessing the individual persons and we're not blessing the relationship or the homosexuality or the sin or anything else of that nature. Don't believe me? Let's go on. Let's see what else it says. The answer to the proposed dubium does not not preclude the blessings given to individual persons with homosexual inclinations. Hmm. I'm going to read that again. The answer of the proposed dubium does not preclude the blessings given to individual persons with homosexual inclinations. So we're just going to stop there for a second. Notice, after all of this entire document, it's been saying we can't bless unions, we can't bless relationships, we can't bless partnerships, and we can't bless sin. But that does not preclude the blessings given to individual persons. Isn't that what I just said? Isn't that what we have been saying all of this time? That we, the church is allowing for individuals to be blessed. Why? So that they can come closer to God and live according to his statutes. 
it seems pretty clear. I mean, I'm speechless. I've made myself speechless. I don't, or maybe the documents have made me speechless because there's nothing left to say. It's so clear. But let's continue the paragraph. So it does not preclude the blessings given to individual persons with homosexual inclinations who manifest the will to live in fidelity to the revealed plans of God as proposed by church teaching. Again, let's stop. For all the people who are just slandering and bearing false witness out there and saying that the Catholic Church is promoting sin, acknowledging sin, endorsing sin. There are big Catholics out there, huge Catholic influencers, who say the Catholic Church now endorses sin. Can you guys see? I mean, you have to be blind not to see. That's literally saying the opposite. It's saying the blessing is only for those who live in fidelity to the revealed plans of God as proposed by church teaching. What is the church teaching? Homosexuality is wrong. Gay marriage is wrong. It's intrinsically disordered. It's unnatural. The persons are loved by God. The persons are not disordered. The persons are not unnatural. But the homosexuality itself is a disorder. That is the teaching of the church. And the blessings are only for those who are willing to live according to the proposed teachings of the church. <sighs> I mean, oxygen. <sighs> Breathing <laughs> over and over again in a world of madness around us. Catholics, please, do me a favor. Defend the church. Defend your church. Defend your pope. Defend it from evil and from Satan that has entered. I mean, people are saying the smoke has, Satan has entered the church. We see it right now. We're seeing it a lot. Defend your church. Get up with the truth right now. Defend it. Get these documents. Get the wording. Have it in a paper somewhere. Share it with the world. And many of you have started to do that. Many of you are standing up. Many of you are saying, that's not true. Stop listening to the media. Many of you are saying, stop your, what we say all the time, stop the hack job apologetics. Stop the hack job evangelization. Just stop it. Defend your faith, Catholics. Rise up. Take back our church from people in the church who are trying to destroy it. A huge monumental schism going on now, started by the SSPX, Sede Vicantis, and other evil, evil people who are trying to destroy the church the same way Protestantism did, and the evil that did destroy it in many ways back then. But of course, we're still here, and we always will be. But it goes on. It says, the church declares illicit any form of blessing that tends to acknowledge their unions as such. So anything that acknowledges a union as valid, you can't receive a, ble a blessing. It says it declares it illicit. You can't do it. It says if that were the case, the blessing would manifest not the intention to entrust such individual persons, individual persons to the protection and the help of God in the sense mentioned above, but to approve and encourage a choice and a way of life that cannot be recognized as objectively ordered to the revealed plans of God. Ooh, there it is. Boom, baby. Come on. Like, just, it's so obvious. It's so evident. It's so clear. And this is what Fiducia Supplicans is referring to and always coming back to. It says that it can't, well, first of all, it says it can bless individual persons who are seeking the protection and the help of God, seeking to live according to him. So it, re it reinforces that. But then it says it cannot bless the unions or relationships or partnerships or coupleships. Why? Because it would approve and encourage a choice and a way of life that cannot be recognized by God or the church and is objectively disordered to the plans of God. It's not objectively ordered to the revealed plans of God. I've never been speechless this much, but I don't know what else to say. I, there's no commentary needed. <laughs> it speaks for itself. I just pray from the bottom of my heart that the Catholics out there can see it, be inspired by it, be comforted by it through the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, and then receive the fire of the Holy Spirit to stand up and defend it. And again, there are many good priests and bishops who have been led astray by the sensational, just crazy amounts of just nonsense going on out there. 
even from the highest up people in the church are being influenced by rad trads or just selectively reading the documents or reading it quickly or listening to the what other people say rather than studying it for themselves. And listen to this. It says, it is necessary that what is blessed corresponds with God's designs. It is necessary that what is blessed corresponds with God's designs. Does homosexuality? No. Do same-sex unions or couples? No. Do individual persons who are trying to live according to God's plan and might be struggling with sin but want to live for him and are seeking his blessing, his help, and are trying to do the right thing? Yes, that is the right way. People who realize, and that's exactly what Fiducia Suplicant says. And you could go back to our last video. We quote it word for word that the people who can receive the blessings are those who realize that they are destitute, that they have nothing, that they need God, and they are trying to live for him. It says that the church has always considered only those sexual relationships that are lived out within marriage to be morally licit. So for all of you people who are participating with the devil himself and slandering the church, saying that the Catholic church says it's now licit to endorse homosexuality or gay marriage. Hear that all the time from Protestants who are participating in the devil's false lies rather than actually doing the research. I mean, this is what Protestants want to be true, but just because you want the church to be wrong doesn't mean you shouldn't act godly. You are acting ungodly right from the pit of hell itself because God is a God of truth and you are speaking the complete opposite, you Protestants who are lying across the world, saying that the Catholic Church now allows gay marriage, when the Catholic Church allows no such thing. Or the Catholic Church now blesses same-sex unions, when over and over and over and over and over and over it has said that it can't bless same-sex unions, or couples, or partnerships, or any of those other words that it used. Can't bless sin. It can't bless sin. Ad nauseum, as Cardinal Fernandez said, <laughs> the documents have said that, as we can see. Cardinal Fernandez has even come out and clarified these exact same things. He's changed nothing and only just repeated it in different ways because nothing needs to be clarified, really, except for the monumental confusion of the media, those who listen to the media, the sensationalist gaslighters, and those who are influenced by them. I would also say that for all the, the, the haters out there who are even Catholics who say, well, look at Father James Martin, gave him a free pass. Father James Martin is wrong. He's wrong. He's literally going against all of the things that these documents say. He's doing what he wants because he wants to do what he wants. He does what he does, but he's not listening to this. I mean, this literally, Cardinal Fernandez said these blessings were only meant to be a quick little blessing on the street. If someone says, Father, come up to me. I would I'm having a hard time following God. Can you give me a blessing to give me strength to follow God? Yes, bless me, my, uh, bless you, my son. It's, it says it right here. It just is supposed to be a simple, quick blessing on the go, on the street, a few seconds long. It's not supposed to be in public. We're not supposed to get a picture of it, Father James Martin, of two people that look like they're at an altar, which all of this literally condemns again and again and again. So just because some people are trying to do what they want doesn't render the documents invalid or erroneous. Cardinal Fernandez in a clarifications even said this is for individuals who seek to live for Christ, not for their sin, for Christ, who are trying to live the way he wants, according to the mind of the church. They're not people who are trying to live in sin. They're not try people who are trying to justify their sin. So for all you Catholic hacks out there who are saying that the Catholic church is allowing now people to justify their sin, <sighs> you are part of the problem. You are the problem. You're no better than Protestants who say the Catholics worship Mary, who say the Catholics treat her as a goddess, and all these other things because Protestants fail to do actual research. We don't care what the documents say. It's obvious. We see Catholics worship Mary. We know they do. We don't care what the church says. It's kind of the same attitude that's being portrayed here. Even Cardinal Fernandez said himself, listen to it, he goes back in his clarifications now. He's going back to the 2021 document and still relying on it because that's the context. He says in 2021, it was said that only individuals could be blessed separately. Here it is said that in reality, the two can be together because these types of pastoral blessings are not intended to validate anything. They're not intended to validate anything. They're for sinners 
who are not living together in the way they want. And even people who are living, uh, who are struggling with same sex are talking about how they have other homosexual friends and they might want to come up for a blessing. They're not living together. They don't have a relationship. They're not living in sin, but they want blessings from God to help them live better. <laughs> as one priest said, wow, at least we're not treating homosexuals as worse than inanimate objects anymore because we have blessings for cars. We have blessings for rocks. We have blessings for pets. And really, Cardinal Fernandez says we have blessings for everyone and everything, for those who are trying to follow God in, for some, in his will, have to live his will. He goes on to say that the text never speaks of blessing the union. The text never speaks of blessing the union. So for all those people who are saying that the Catholic Church blesses same-sex unions now, you're wrong. You're wrong. I hope and pray that you fall on your knees and repent of misleading people. How many people have you influenced through your comments? How much Satan have you spread through false teachings? It's wrong. Please repent. Defend the faith. Defend the truth. Because it literally says the text never speaks of blessing unions. So for every person who's ever said the church blesses gay unions now, it's wrong. Never. And this is something that is excluded based on the traditional doctrine of the church. The traditional doctrine of the church. It's upholding the traditional doctrine of the church. That's its intention. It's what it wants to do. It's what it's doing. But it blesses the two people who are in a couple, meaning two people, individuals. He explains that the, the, the people in the couple are blessed, not the couple itself, not the union itself. So in later documents, this is the context. If it says it's blessing the couple, that's what it means. And that it's blessing the two people within the couple, individually themselves, not together, because it's already said that it can't bless couples, unions, relationships, partnerships, or anything else across the board. And it's asking them to live the gospel with even greater fidelity. That's important. And notice that the word couple, some people say couple means couple. Really? Many words have different meanings. Couple has different meanings. Few has different meanings. I mean, couple could be a relationship. It could be an, a couple in marriage. It could be a couple in a dating relationship, or it could just be a couple of chapters, or it could be a couple siblings who go up and get blessed by the Pope. Two siblings are a couple. A couple is simply two or three people, a small amount of people. That's a textbook dictionary definition of what a couple is. It does not have to be a relationship. It could just be two or three things or people not even related in a relationship at all. So when we say couple, in the mind, this is why I keep going back to the mind of the church. What do they mean in the mind of the church, even though it might come across a little bit confusing? This is why the context is necessary. That it's blessing the individuals, the two people who are in a couple, the people themselves. It's blessing the people, not the couple. Not the couple as in relationship or union or partnership. The document literally says that right there. It's so clear. And that's why I was saying that they could come up separately, but now they can come up together because they're not blessing the partnership or the union or the couple. Um, they're just blessing the people. Quick, a few seconds, who are seeking to bless God's will. We bless you. We ask you that God help you to do his will in your life. And we ask you to have help and to do his will. Health and to do his will. That's what the blessings are supposed to be. They're not supposed to be in front of altars. They're not supposed to be public. They're not supposed to be up in front. They're not supposed to be this big to do. It's a quick passing on the spot blessing. That's it. That's why the Pope and Cardinal Fernandez has said that monumentally across the board, even in the hierarchies of the church, people are misreading, unbelievably misreading, the documents. I mean, Cardinal Fernandez said he can't even believe the amount of nonsense going on there about a simple document that's so ridiculously clear. Even Pope Francis in his past statements has said that being homosexual is not a crime, but it is a sin. And all the homosexual organizations, including Father Martin, were like, wait, whoa, 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 what do you mean it's a sin? You know, you can't say homosexuality is a sin. And what did Pope Francis say in clarification of that? He came out and said, when I said it is a sin, I was simply referring to Catholic moral teaching. So for all of you people out there, including Protestants and haters, who say that the Pope is endorsing sin, the Pope is okay with homosexuality, the Pope is okay with gay marriage, shame on all of you. Shame on all of you for such pathetic, disgusting, 
low-level sophomoric research. Seriously, I pray that you are convicted by the Holy Spirit and get on your knees and repent of it. He says that homosexuality is in a sin, even as a clarification. He, should, he said that it's a sin like every other sexual act outside of marriage. He didn't mince words. I mean, he upheld Pope Benedict's condemnation of gay marriage and said it word for word in past statements. We have a whole video on that. So the Pope has not been unclear about this. What he has done is try to love everybody, even people who struggle with same-sex attraction, as we all should. This is what people don't get. They hate the sin, and they hate the sinner many times. Pope Francis loves the sinners, and he calls them, but he doesn't like the sin. That's how we should be as well. We should hate the sin and love the sinners. Most recently, Cardinal Sarah, you know, come up, people say, oh, Cardinal Sarah said, or Cardinal Mueller said, just because top advisors are confused doesn't mean they're right. I love Cardinal Sarah. I have high respect for him. I love his writings. He's a holy man, but he's wrong on this. And if you read his writings, it's evident that he's misquoting many things and even refers to many uh, African bishops who are on board with him, when in fact the African bishops that he, many of the African bishops and people that he's referring to are not on board with him and have said they disagree. They literally have expressed fidelity to the Pope and to this document. And he's saying, no, they agree with me. So he's actually wrong in his facts here, even though I love him and I think he's right about so much. What did Cardinal Fernandez say in response to Cardinal Sarah? He said, the intention of the document is to bless sin. Oh, wait, sorry. No, he didn't. He said, the intention of the document is to bless people. The, in the intention of the document is to bless people, the individual persons, everything we've literally been saying. He goes on and said, it's not the union. It's not the relationship. It's not the coupleship. It's the persons, individual people who are seeking to live God's will in their life. Many people don't read the text well. That's what he said. That's what the Pope said. And that is a recipe and a foundation for slander and for Satan to work in the church as he is. Even Fernandez said that people either aren't reading it or they're reading it with dishonesty and not coming from a place with sincerity. And that is 100% true. They're reading it, again, from a hermeneutic of suspicion or rupture, meaning they're already coming to the table with ideas in their mind that the Pope is wrong. He said 100,000 things. He's a liberal. He's this. And we're just going to confirm this. But if you read it, the documents themselves, take all of that away and just read the statements, the clarifications, the documents. They're so obvious. It's so blunt. It's so clear. It's so wonderfully stated. And again, it was to beat down the German bishops who were trying to create schism in the church, who were trying to change the teachings of the church on marriage and homosexuality. And the church is saying no. If an individual wants to come up for a quick blessing and they're trying to follow God, fine, they can be blessed. But the unions, the relationships and the partnerships, marriages cannot be. Sin cannot be. But people who are sincerely seeking God, they can be. How can this be misunderstood? I'm yelling because I'm passionate. <laughs> I'm yelling because it doesn't make sense. Like, so obvious. But I hope that it's obvious to you all as well. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for staying tuned. Get up and defend your faith, Catholics. It's time. It's time. It's time. We are under attack. We are under assault from schismatics, from heretics, from people in the church who are under those titles right now, from people who hate the Pope, who are even call themselves Catholic. People in the church are saying that we don't even have a Pope right now. There is no Pope, which is literally Protestantism. It's literally orthodox. It's literally schism, apostasy, mortal sin, death to your soul and your relationship with God to separate yourself from the one true church and the supreme pontiff. That is the official doctrinal dogmatic teachings of canon law and the teachings of the church. Careful. Be careful. Many Catholics just don't know. They're ignorant and they're just being fed by all this hysteria. They don't know better, which is maybe why it's not mortal sins for them, but they're still in big sin and, and spreading all of this, which is why I'm asking you Catholics to stand up and defend the faith. Get these quotes. Pause the video. Get the documents. Write them down. 
Tell them to everybody. Let them see in black and white that they're misrepresenting it. We need you Catholics to rise up, to stand up, to fight for the truth, for Jesus Christ, for his bride, for his body, for the Pope, for our church. That's what we are doing here at Catholic Truth. That's what we exist for. That's what we were started for. That's what we were founded for. In addition to helping people to know, love, and serve Jesus Christ, to have a relationship with him, to be transformed by him. And so many people don't, which is why they're such hack jobs in apologetics, because they're all about arguing, winning, fighting. And they don't have that deep relationship with Jesus, which keeps us honest, true, virtuous, and loving, kind, giving people the benefit of the doubt, not assuming the worst in people. Even if someone you think someone's wrong, all the saints say we're supposed to give them the benefit of the doubt. It's kind of like here in America. Someone is innocent by law until proven guilty. But many times in the church, they're just guilty even before proven so. And that's wrong. That's wrong in the country and that is wrong in the church even more so. So thank you all for watching. Please share this video and please support our ministry. Please. There's not a lot of organizations doing what we do speaking the hard truth in love and trying to undo the lies of the Catholic faith. So if you love the faith, please support our ministry. Patreon, PayPal, we have links below. And please follow us on social media. And please tell everyone about us and share this with the world. God bless you.